Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the history of the Japanese-made lawsuit era guitars. So come with me on a trip back to the 1970s and stick around to the end because the truth about these axes will probably surprise you. Let's go check it out. So as rock and lead style playing started to get really popular in the 70s, the demand for solid body electric guitars went through the roof. With the increased demand, American brands started to get a little sloppy. Companies like Fender and Gibson started to produce their guitars with a lot lower quality, but of course kept the prices at a premium. At this time, a man named Harry Rosenblum, owner of Medley Music out in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, had his finger on the pulse of current American-made guitar manufacturing and noticed that the quality was starting to suck. This is around the time when he started a partnership with Hoshino Gaki Jin out of Japan. Wait, did you say Hoshino Gaki Jin? I did, and I bet that name sounds familiar, and we'll get to it later. So with this partnership, Rosenblum became the sole North American importer of Hoshino's Japanese-made guitars. All right, so now back to Hoshino and why it probably sounds familiar. So in the 1920s, Hoshino started to import guitars from Spain from a small guitar manufacturer that went by the name of Salvador Ibanez. Eventually, Hoshino started his own line of guitars with a spin on Ibanez's name. I bet you can't guess what that was. You guessed it. Hoshino's new guitar line eventually became what we know as Ibanez. So basically, Hoshino took the Ibanez name, dropped the accent, and took it as his own. Moving on. So in the late 1960s and early 1970s, there was still a lot of hostility towards Japanese-made products. So with a brand name like Ibanez, Rosenblum still imported these guitars, thinking that the name wasn't Japanese enough for consumers to notice. In 1971, the partnership between Hoshino and Rosenblum became super profitable for Hoshino. Eventually, Hoshino bought Rosenblum's house brand guitars, Elger Guitars. And then around the same time, Hoshino actually changed his brand name and company to Ibanez USA. Now here's where it starts to get interesting. In the early 1970s, Ibanez started producing copies of 60s era American made guitars. We're talking Les Paul copies, Fender lookalikes, even Rickenbacker style guitars. At the same time, the public was starting to notice the decline in American-made quality. And since Ibanez guitars were of decent quality, but half the price of the American-made brands, Ibanez guitars started to have huge success, while American-made brands started to really feel the hit. Following Ibanez's lead, many foreign manufacturers started to import their own version of American-made copies. These came in the form of Bernie, Greco, and Tokai, just to name a few. Interesting quick fact, a Tokai Stratocaster copy was actually Alexi Leho from Children of Bodom's first guitar. You really do learn something every day. So a majority of these Japanese copy guitars didn't actually come with serial numbers. This is one of the ways today how they really find out if you do indeed have a Japanese lawsuit era copy guitar. So now time for the actual lawsuit. And there really was a lawsuit, so pay attention. So Ibanez started producing a Les Paul copy called the Super Standard in the mid 70s. Aside from the Les Paul body, it had the Gibson Signature open book style headstock. Apparently this headstock was just way too similar to the signature headstock that Gibson had on their Les Pauls and their guitars. The parent company of Gibson then filed an official lawsuit against Hoshino and Ibanez. The matter was eventually settled out of court, but it forced Hoshino and Ibanez to revisit the design and look of their headstocks on their Les Paul copies. In revisiting the headstock, Ibanez actually revisited the overall construction of their guitars and the tone woods that they were using in their products. This massively improved the quality of the Ibanez guitar. And during this overhaul, we saw a lot of classic Ibanez models being made. This includes the Iceman, the Destroyer, and the RG, which are still huge classics today. So then what was the result of the lawsuit era? Many would agree that that time period actually changed the guitar industry for the better. For one, consumers were less weary about buying Japanese products. And since most manufacturing has moved to Korea, China, Indonesia, and Mexico, Japanese made guitars are actually a selling point. Another thing is that American made brands found the utility of moving manufacturing overseas. This allowed their brands to be more affordable and accessible to the consumers. Eventually, bigger brands brands actually had to compete with these lawsuit era Japanese made guitars. And the result of this was the big brands making copies of their own guitars. This came in the form of Gibson buying Epiphone, 
the Squire line from Fender, and even the LTD line from ESP Guitars. Yes, I know ESP is a Japanese company, but you get my point. Now, because these Lawsuit Era guitars have such an interesting story, it's a good chance that they've actually increased in value. And on top of that, they're kind of a collector's item for some guitarists. So if you have one, it's probably a good idea to hold on to it or keep it as a collector's item. All right, guys, so that does it for today's history lesson. If you enjoy short videos on guitar history, please subscribe below. That would help me a lot. And I just want to thank all of you for stopping by. Bye, and I'll see you next time.